towards the career technical education field in the areas of allied health, health sciences, outstanding health science programs in nursing, surgical technology, dental hygiene, and emergency medical technology. It's been an amazing program. It's a state-of-the-art facility with over 200 degrees and accredited certifications. Visit wccd.edu. Register today. Watch WHPR and TV 33 when you want, where you want, how you want. WHPR is now in your pocket. Download our free app by going to the App Store or Google Play and enter WHPR TV in the search engine. And there we are. You can download WHPR TV or radio. You heard about it. Now come be a part of it. Roku Detroit Worldwide. Approximately 8 million viewers. Welcome to the community shall be restored. I'm your host, Prophet Cedric Banks, along with Prophet Stanetta Banks. We have a tremendous show for you today. One of the outstanding community leaders that's doing some outstanding things in the community. And we are happy to have this brother on to be with us today because he is uh, uh, doing some great things. But before we get into that, we want to get into Pastor Donetta, what you got going on? Well, we're very excited. Um, our pastor was uh, in the Michigan Chronicle. Uh, he's doing a great work. He's not only a pastor, but he's a great community leader. And once again, he's in the Michigan Chronicle. This time, he's being honored by Black Family Development. Amen. He's being honored and as a community leader for the Osborne District. And so we're really excited about that. He was one of uh, a few other leaders in the community that back Black Family Development uh, acknowledged that they believe in, that they know is doing the great work in the community and so uh, we're just very excited about that you can pick it up in this issue of the Michigan Chronicle that's February the 27th the February 27th to January the 2nd and it's in this current issue you can pick it up all over where the Michigan Chronicle is sold amen and so it's just a beautiful picture and it's showing him with his certificate amen where they honored him amen and the work that he's doing in district 3 so we're very excited about that amen also, uh, we welcome you to come out to our church, the Heart of Jesus International Deliverance Church, where our senior pastor, Prophet Cedric Banks, is doing just a great and, and, and mighty work for the Lord. Amen. His word is one of power, one that's practical tools that he uh, ministers to the people. He prophesies with great accuracy. And so if you're looking to hear from the Lord, if you're looking for a true word straight from the throne room of God, you need to come out, amen, to the Heart of Jesus International Deliverance Church. We're located at 14111 East Seven Mile Road. Uh, we're inside the Wild WOW Center. Our service Service time is every Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, come out and be blessed of the Lord. Uh, you will leave with practical tools to help you be victorious in your walk with the Lord. Amen. All righty. And um, what are some of the guests we got coming up? Oh, wow. Upcoming guests that we have, well, on February the 6th, we have the president of the Michigan Democratic Black Caucus, uh, Lavonia Perryman, will be on the program. Uh, they, have put, they have placed many political leaders in in office that's I think that's in office today uh, state and um, citywide so they are a very very powerful political organization uh, Michigan Democratic Black Caucus uh, and the president is uh, Brenda Perry I'm not, not Lavonia. Brenda Lavonia Perryman I'm sorry okay Amen. And then on February the 13th, uh, we have the City of Detroit City Council Member Andre Spivey, mm -hmm. uh, District Number 4. Mm -hmm. Amen. He'll be on the program. Um, and then on February the 27th, uh, Senator Burt Johnson, uh, he's going to be on the program. All right. Amen. And then on... Uh, we have March the 5th, we have City of Detroit City Council Member President Pro Tem, uh, George Cushenberry. Uh, George he'll be on the right. program. That's good. Yes. And then April the 5th, uh, you have uh, Wayne County Commissioner uh, Jewel Ware. Uh, she's in District 2. Uh, she'll be coming on the program. 
And April the 30th, we have scheduled City of Detroit Police Department Homicide Unit, uh, Detective Kenny Gardner. Detective Kenny Gardner. Um, and you can see Detective Kenny Gardner on the great, great uh, t TV detective police show called The First 48 Hours. And that's one of my favorite shows, you know. Goes all around the world. And anytime the first 48 hours come here, uh, many times Detective uh, Homicide Detective Kenny Gardner is leading a homicide. So we're going to be here with uh, Detective Kenny Gardner. We, uh, he has investigated some of the most prominent homicides over the last 25 years in the city of Detroit. And um, we'll be right here on that day talking. But right now, we're going to get into our guests, what we got going, what we have here in the studio. He's live here in the studio with us. And um, he's been doing an outstanding job. And he comes from a, a prominent family, a legacy uh, that's been in the political organization for many, many years. So a lot of genetics and blessings have been passed down. The mantle and the torch have been passed down to him. And he's running with it. And he's a, a very solid young man that's, uh, that's rising up and that's making some great, great things happen. Uh, let's welcome to the TV show today. Let's welcome State Representative Fred Durhall. The third. All right. Wow, well, I thank you very much uh, for having Wow, the phones is lighting up already, <laughs> uh, State Rep. Yeah, that, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but, but I thank you very much for having me on the show today. It's an honor. Uh, it's an honor to come back to the show. Um, you've had some great guests on the show before. I see the Honorable... Um, John Conyers, our congressman for Michigan's Congressional 13th District, uh, who has been a stronghold and now the dean of uh, Congress for us and the first black dean in U.S. history. And so uh, I'm very honored to be here with guests like that. You've also had Mayor Mike Duggan on the show right, right. Uh, before and, and Sheriff Benny Napoleon, I believe. So you've, you've had some heavy hitters on the show, and I'm just honored to be here today, and I appreciate the work that you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, and that's big coming from you. And, um, um, you know, Fred, State Representative Fred, um, tell us about District 5. Um, you know, I, I know Mary Shetfield is the councilwoman there. She's in District one of them. She, it, she, has a, she has a piece uh, by Councilman Gabe Leland as well as Councilwoman Raquel Castaneda-Lopez uh, takes now, up the majority of my district as far as city council no, districts are concerned. In, in five? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, I didn't know so, that. Yeah, our, our district is pretty vast. I represent 90,000 constituents, uh, obviously, in, in my district. But it goes all the way from Livernois and Davidson all the way to southwest Detroit to oh, Ford and Schaefer. Because the reason why, because when was, when was Councilwoman Lopez on the show? Last week. Last week, I thought it was. I didn't know if it was last week or the week before. Okay, that's okay. So you know, I, I so you know, we have a chance to work with uh, Councilwoman Lopez, Castaneda Lopez, uh, as well as Councilman Leland uh, and Sheffield as well, who's just very much you know right outside of my district uh, has a small portion of it. Uh, so you know, we're very very fortunate to have some good elected officials that we can work with. Uh, particularly young, and um, you know, we just look forward to doing what we can for for my district on this uh, city level. But uh, as my job is concerned, more so on the state level. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Now, you've been in office now, um, coming up almost on what? Almost on a year and a half. Is it two years? Uh, One year and seventeen days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is an election year, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Now, have there is there any goals that you have accomplished uh, out there uh, since you've been uh, state representative in District uh, Number Five? Any any goals you've accomplished? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of the work that I've been able to do um, while being elected there. You know, obviously, there's more that you always want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but particularly for our community in this last budget cycle, I was able to secure you know um, some funds for the district. Uh, I was able to help to save Detroit's revenue sharing, which was under attack by the Republicans. I uh, helped save $5.8 million uh, for Detroit's revenue sharing. That's uh, that's wow. We were able to save the DAPSET program, which I was very instrumental in. Now, now I want to say this. Now, the show is reaching uh, almost 10 million people out there. Mm -hmm. And you, one thing about this 
show is a very, very strong political audience. Absolutely. And I'm glad that they're hearing this mm -hmm. about your accomplishments out there because they need that. They need to hear this because right. we need people like you not only to uh, uh, be in office, but remain in office. Okay. You see well, what I'm saying? Well, well, I'm I, just going to put it I, like I, that. I, and I appreciate that. Let me, let me, because I'm not supposed to show no favor to no, you. No, no, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I, I, but I'm a firm believer if you do your job and you and you go to work every day and fight for the people, the people will put their faith in you and they'll send you back if you're doing a good job. And so, you know, I focus on the job, particularly more so than campaigning year-round. I think the job is most important in try, trying to be the most effective leader I have. I can be, I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, but we've, we've got some real good things going. You know, I got $200,000 for the Dexter Elmhurst Community Center, which was one of my goals. Wow. Which is uh, That's good. a community center in my district. Uh, and you probably heard about it, you know, over the summertime. There was a shooting over there um, when they had a block party. And okay. so, yeah. uh, but this center is very instrumental in my district, you know, and, and for youth to have access to a recreation center because we face uh, in our city now, you know, a, a time where there's not many recreation centers, particularly sure. on the west side. Dexter is a hard hit area, has mm -hmm. been for years. The uh, drug epidemic in the late 90s came through and hit Dexter very hard. And uh, But we're starting to revi uh, revitalize and rebuild the community, and I'm very excited about that. And so we were able just to secure some money and bring some money back to the district for programs uh, and projects. And um, I'm just very blessed. I'm very fortunate that I was able to do that. Okay. We're here today with State Representative Fred Durhall Jr. The third. The third. <laughs> State Representative. Thank you. District number five. Now, Fred, is there any things that you got coming up? Any, uh, any uh, uh, things that you got coming up where the community can get involved, where the community can c kind of uh, uh, reach out and touch you, get a hold to you uh, on some events that you got coming up in the near future? If it is, let's put it out there to those out in TV land. Well, I like to be very accessible. Um, every last Friday of the month, I have I hold a coffee hour. Where, okay. Wow. Uh, wow, the phones are lighting up. Look wow. at that. Okay. Where, where okay. Constituents can come and, and sit down and Now, and where talk is this at? It'll be at it's it's always at the McDonald's on Grand River and uh Livernois, uh and we provide free coffee and free muffins for everyone that comes. And so I like to take that opportunity to talk to my constituents so I can find out what's on their mind. Uh, what they're thinking and, and uh, address their issues and just give them some one-on-one -on -one time because I spend so much time in Lansing. I'm the assistant Democratic leader of the House of Representatives, and so I'm pretty busy in Lansing, as you can imagine. Uh, but I like to take the time and spend time with my constituents and address their concern. And it's always a very good turnout. We had it, we had it yesterday because it's always the last Friday of the month, uh, and we had close and to about time? 20, 25 people there. Wonderful, so, wonderful. What time is that now? It's from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay. Yes. Okay, in the morning. Then. In the morning. Okay. Okay. Well, we want uh we want to, we want at the last Friday of uh February, we want to see increase. Yeah, absolutely. We want to see absolutely. increase and we're asking those out in TV land and uh let them know where this location will be at again. Uh state representative for it and let them know what will be taking place at this uh gathering. Well it's a it's a coffee hour and it'll be on um at the McDonalds on Grand River in Livernois. There's only one there. Uh <laughs> and, and so uh, it's from nine AM to eleven AM and you can come and address your concerns. You can speak to your rep uh one on one and uh tell me what's on your mind. Amen, amen. Uh, do you have a question, Pastor Donetta, for State Representative Fred Durhall the uh, Third? What goals do you have on your itinerary currently that you're working on? Now that you have met, you know, uh, bringing some funds, what are what is on your itinerary right now for your district to get completed prior to your uh, election term? Well, I just you know passed my first House bill, House Bill 4187, which let me tell you is difficult in a Republican legislature, uh, but I passed that last week. Uh, and then pass 88 to 18 in the House, and now it's moving over to the Senate. We get it through the Senate and get it signed into law. 
uh, that'll be a good thing. This bill, what it does, it increases the penalty for individuals who destroy highway signs, highway structures, uh, use graffiti on our highway signs and structures uh, in our community and make it, you know, for individuals who make it unsafe for our seniors and for our children who play in the community. And so we were able to get that bill passed and I've worked very diligently to do that. And so I'm fortunate that that is done. Uh, a couple more things that I'm working on. I have a couple bills that, uh, one, uh, address stalking, uh, which is a serious issue. Uh, but most importantly, in this budget cycle, try to bring as many funds as we can back to the district to work on some other projects and some other areas in the district, like Littlefield Community uh, and uh, over there by Meyer and the Manor Community, Pinehurst, areas like that. You know, um, you're blessed because you had a great leader in your life. First of all, we're here today with uh, State Representative Fred Durhall III. And you're blessed because Thank you. you got a father yes. that was great in the political arena for many, many years. That's, that's a household name yes. in the political arena. What role and uh, what inspiration did he bring to your life mm -hmm. uh, at inspiring you uh, to become a great political leader like you are today. I mean, honestly, I, I can't tell you um, how blessed and fortunate I am to have the father that I have. Uh, I literally came out of the womb uh, and, and was thrust into politics and, and meeting individuals, influential political leaders like the late uh, great Coleman Young Jr., um, or I'm sorry, Coleman Young, who uh, was just very instrumental in building Detroit and strengthening the power of African Americans in our city. Um, but my father has been involved in politics for over 40 years. He's been my mentor. I can't explain how his tutelage has helped me become the best and effective legislator that I could be. Uh, and he served well. He was the dean of the Michigan House of Representatives, right. and, yes. and he taught me pretty much everything I know legislatively. So uh, I had a very good teacher, and, you know, I'm blessed to have the father that I have. Okay. Now, we may not be able to get to the lines today because uh, we, this is an election year and we're, we're talking to uh, Fred Durhall uh, the third, and uh, we want him to get out as much as he can get out because he's doing an outstanding job. I know every line is lit up, uh, but if you can just hold on, we'll see. Anybody got a question for Fred Durhall? Well, let me tell you, being the assistant Democratic leader is a pretty tough job. I, that means I am uh, the third ranking Democrat in the Michigan House of Representatives. Um, and so only behind our Democratic leader and our Democratic floor leader. Uh, and now, you so, was placed in this position after only being there a year? Uh, I was placed in the position as soon as I started serving. And okay. so. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, see, you came in with a lot of favor. Well, I'm sure you came in without a favor. A lot of, a lot of favor uh, because of the experience of my father, but right, right. you know, a lot of experience as well. You know, an untold story about me. I spent a lot of time on the floor of the House of Representatives prior to my election. Mm -hmm. I spent three or four years in Lansing learning the legislative okay. process. Uh, being you worked under your father? I worked on, under my father for free, by, by the way. Okay. <laughs> and so, uh, but, you know, it, and, and I helped solve constituent issues. I was his district office manager when we had our district office back in the district. And, uh, and so, I, you know, I gained a lot of respect from the colleagues uh, who were my dad's colleagues at the time and who are my colleagues now. And, you know, just blessed that they put their faith in me. And then our Democratic leader, uh, Representative Tim Grimel, uh, appointed me as the assistant Democratic leader for the House. And so, you know, I'm very fortunate in that sense. You know, I like to think that they respect me a great deal and know that I have a great grasp of the legislature and uh, know that I can be very effective in what I do in bringing and holding our caucus together. Okay. We're here today with State Representative Fred Durhall III. Fred, what changes? You've already did a lot of positive up there, okay? What are some of the other changes that you are looking to make well, in the state, in Lansing. Well, well, one of the number one issues that we're facing, you know, we're facing obviously two issues. One is the Flint water crisis mm -hmm. uh, that we're facing, which is, you know, very sad. And my heart always goes out to the residents of Flint uh, as we try to uh, repair and repair the infrastructure in Flint uh, and kind of provide some relief to something that's been a tragedy. Uh, it's hurt a lot of people. And so... 
uh, we definitely want to get funds there to try to rectify that problem as soon as possible and then for the future just basically invest in the infrastructure because the long-term damage that has been done uh, is more tragic than even the short-term damage one of the other things that you know is difficult to sleep at night when I think about is Detroit Public Schools uh, which yes. is on the top of my agenda uh, as well we're working to resolve the debt but not only the debt make sure and to ensure should I say that we never get in the debt again and also provide wraparound services for our children uh, also provide a quality education for our children and, and a sound infrastructure for education uh, our children we have some of the greatest children in the world in the city of Detroit uh, and sometimes it's very sad that under an emergency manager which has come and, and basically taken over our school system uh, that one they ran up the debt but two uh, it's basically helped destroy Detroit or public education in Detroit. So that's those are you know that is actually my top goal, particularly uh, when we speak about the city of Detroit, our education system, and then of course you know getting people back to work. Uh, the untold story is is that you know individuals in the city of Detroit we probably are close to 40 percent unemployed. It may not seem that way with some of the statistics that are given, but all I do is invite somebody to ride down two, three in the afternoon to ride around the neighborhoods, and you see that a lot of our young men and, and even young women in uh, some cases don't have anything to do, and it's difficult to find a job. So we've got to be able to provide opportunities to that, and education is linked to that as well. So you are looking to provide opportunities for those in the community? Absolutely. What are some of the opportunities you're looking to uh, provide? Well, we want to work on job training, uh, which is going to be very instrumental. You know, we hear about the stadiums getting built, the Red Wing mm -hmm. Stadium. We hear about the bridge that will be built. Uh, but I want to make sure that my people in my community have access to those jobs, and I don't want those individuals to be able to give excuses to people who are applying for these jobs saying that they're not qualified. So we've got to provide some vocational training, some on-job training, uh, and, and some skills uh, and education for those skills so they'll be able to get those jobs by the time, you know, those projects come. Uh, you got any idea what these uh, jobs will be paying? Well, no, no, I don't know off, offhand, but I would assume, you know, uh, jobs, you know, of that nature and, and skilled trade jobs generally go anywhere from $12 an hour and they can go over $18 an hour. And okay, so that's good. It could be very, you know, beneficial to individuals in the community. And, and you get people back to work, you'll start seeing the communities as well grow. Right. Uh, you know, there's a stigma or, or you know, kind of a myth that people in Detroit don't want to work. And I don't find that to be true. Uh, we've got to remember this is a, a city that has a long history of individuals wanting to work. The reason why Detroit's population grew is because most people migrated from the south to come here and work. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, we've got to get our jobs back here so we can uh, get our people back to work and help rebuild our communities. Exactly. And it's a blue-collar city. Absolutely. Where there is a, 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 a many tenacious, zealous people that's out to provide and make a living. Yes. You see, and it's an old saying, if you can't make it in Detroit, you can't make it nowhere. Yeah, I, I remember that saying. I remember my <laughs> grandfather saying it. And as I came to, uh, came to age and grew older, I can see that definitely being true. And so, um, but we've got to give people the opportunity to make it as well. Uh, we've got to provide the same opportunities that we provide on the western side of the state. We've got to provide them here in the city of Detroit where our people are the strongest. This is the largest city in the state. And mm -hmm. so we've got, to, we've got to help our uh, citizens here as well. Yeah. Pastor Donetta, do you have a question for Fred Durhall Jr., state rep? Uh, you mentioned wraparound services for the children. I'm just wondering exactly what those are. Well, the wraparound services that we speak of in regards to Detroit Public Schools and education, uh, we talk about, you know, well, the challenges that are not talked about is when our children go to school, some of them have difficulty at home. You know, some are leaving, they haven't had breakfast yet. Some are leaving, they don't have access to computers. They don't have access to Internet uh, like some other children in the school districts have. And so being, being able to provide those services as well, and then also wraparound services, meaning that they would extend to the parents. We talk about a low literacy rate here in the city of Detroit, but some parents struggle with that as well. And so it's difficult if you're at home with your child and you have to do homework with them and you're having difficulty with it as well. And so I believe we've got to bridge that gap as well and help the parents so the parents can help the children. I know education starts at home. I can tell you that I'm a product and a proud product of Detroit public schools. Um, but I know I also had a great foundation at home. And so we want to be able to provide those services uh, for our children uh, and even after school programs, reading programs, things of that nature. And, you know, um, one of the things that 
you know, parents that, you know, especially in this generation, you know, in this generation, this generation is different mm -hmm. from the children that was mainly uh, that's about 40, 45 years old. Because and the reason why I say that is because back then the village would help raise up right. uh, um, a generation. The village would help raise up a generation. And these days, you can't parents you can't allow the kids to come to school and just um, let the teachers raise them up. You right. got to do your part too at home. You got to do your part too at home. You got to discipline them. You got to do that at home. Uh, what a show today with State Representative Fred Durhall. Uh, the third outstanding show and we will see you next Saturday at 2.30 p.m. right here on the community shall be restored myself and Prophetess Donetta Banks. All right. We'll see you next Saturday at 2.30 p.m. right here on the community shall be restored. What a show. Way to go. Thank you. Good job. Let's say that again. I really do. Hold on. You're watching W33BY, Detroit Highland Park, Michigan.